who is adopted or in some physical way or spiritual way or whatever, a son of God too. So that people point to this verse and say, ah, but this is the verse which says he's a son of God in a way that's different than anybody else is. It says he's the only begotten son of God. Well, does it? Catholics don't translate it that way in their Bible because they appreciate the difficulties it leads into. But the Greek word in this place does not really mean only begotten. It could, but it's, uh, it's not technically the precise word the Greek would have been likely to use, but that's beside the point. The same word is found in another place, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, and here it says that Isaac was the only begotten son of Abraham. Same word in the original text. One applies to Jesus, one applies to Isaac. But when you point out to them that Isaac's older brother outlived his father, so at no time was Isaac literally the only begotten son of Abraham, they'll tell you, well, only begotten doesn't always mean only begotten. It can mean only begotten in a certain sense. So to modify the meaning a little bit. But if you can modify it in this place, why can't you modify it in that place where it says it of Jesus? Another example is, you see, there are scholarly people who are well aware of what the Bible has to say, and a lot of people are aware of explanations of Scripture, but they use one explanation on one occasion and another, another time. As an example, John chapter 14, verse 9 uh, it's reported Jesus said to a certain Philip, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And some people will tell you, See there, Jesus said he was God. He said, Philip, your eyeballs look at me, your eyeballs see God. I am God. They, they fill in the rest of what he meant to say. What he said was, If you see me, you see the Father. Now, if they mean literally Philip is looking at God, then they mean, or looking at the Father, then they mean Jesus is the Father. But he's supposed to be the Son, not the Father. In this place, he says, if you see me, you see, you've seen the Father. And so when you point that out to somebody, say, yeah, but he said Father here. Isn't he supposed to be the Son? I said, well, he said Father. He meant God. Okay, what if he did? <laughs> did he mean to tell Philip that when your eyes look at me, they look at God because I am God? Well, in John chapter 5, verse 37... Here's the same circumstances. Jesus is talking to a group of people who are standing there looking at him and hearing him. And he says to them, You people have never seen the Father nor heard his voice. Well, if he is God, how can he tell people who are looking at him and listening to him, You people, you've never seen God. You've never even heard him speak. They're listening to him. People will tell you, Oh, yes, but you see, what he meant here was, and they'll give you an explanation. But the point is, their explanation is used on this occasion to explain chapter 5, but they should realize that doesn't allow for the meaning in the other place. That is, if Jesus meant to say something symbolic here, then he couldn't have meant anything literal here. If he really meant to tell Philip, when you see me, you see God, because I'm God, then he, it's inconsistent with his statement of people who are literally looking at him, saying, you haven't seen God. We can go round and round with a great many passages of Scripture like this, but let me conclude this portion and try to finish up with uh, uh, later on this afternoon with a, kind of a collection of valuable thoughts, I think, that you can take to people. Let me conclude by just mentioning that as often as you try to mention this sort of thing to people, as often as you may discuss Scriptures and so on, remember your point is, not to reinterpret it, but to tell somebody, look, maybe it means what you say it means, but it could mean this also, because of these things. Their response to that, sooner or later, is to say, it doesn't matter. I can be sure of what he meant to say, because look here. And he reads you the stories of how, when Jesus said a certain thing, the Jews got angry with him. As an example, John chapter 10, verse 30, it's reported Jesus said, The Father and I are one. And they say, And look, what did the Jews do when they heard him say that? Never mind what excuses you make that he could have meant this or that or the other thing. He meant he was God because that's what the Jews thought he meant. They picked up stones to throw at him. He asked them, 
why do you want to stone me? They said, you just claim to be equal to God. And he started to want to stone him. And there they finish, verse 32. There's nine more verses in that chapter that people don't read. What did Jesus then say? Did he tell them, uh, I mean, to reconstruct the story, he said a word and the Jews said, you just claim to be equal to God. What did he do? He said, well, you're right, I'm afraid, I have no choice. So you see, I am God. He didn't do that. He corrected them to say, but you misunderstood me. That's the point of the next nine verses. He said, no, what I said to you is this, this, this. Doesn't your scripture say that and that and that? Therefore, how can you say that I have blasphemed, I've done a thing that you should stone me for? Read it for yourself. But you see, that's the whole context of that. He's, the Jews have misunderstood him. In other words, there were two opinions about Jesus, at least. Some people said that he's less than God, and some people may have said he's claiming to be God. Which opinion did he endorse? Both opinions were wrong, but the only records you'll ever find on the subject are where somebody said something about him that lifted him too high, he corrected him. Well, and that's not so, because other opinions went by. But that, of course, that's a big subject. But basically, I hope you see what I'm getting at, is that people have done a curious thing when they have built a religion around the idea that, well, Jesus said a lot of things that his disciples did not immediately understand. They had to gain the understanding by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It came to them later and it inspired them and it told them, what did Jesus mean when he said this and that and so on. In fact, he was God. It, it revealed that to them later on. I tell you that on the one hand, that his disciples didn't understand him until they had help from God. But on the other side, when you say, how do you know what he meant to say? They'll say, the Jews understood him. They didn't need any help from God. The Jews knew what he meant to say. When he made this claim or that claim, they knew he was talking about being God. In other words, they're saying his friends didn't understand him, his enemies did. Does that make much sense? His complaint is reported in uh, Mark chapter 4, that the Jews don't understand me, for a start. But more on uh, this kind of thing uh, later on, inshallah. Thank you for your time and attention for now. Inshallah.